Out of partners, Team Rockman imports prospect David Bostis. They immediately go toe to toe. Rock and Bostis put on a tremendous sparring session. It was like magic. Rock doing so many things, and Bostis staying right there with him. But again, when you're facing the heavyweight champ of the world, it's not an easy task, and it turned out to be no contest. At the end of week two in Big Bear, Rachman's camp is so pleased by his progress that they actually begin to worry that he's getting too sharp too early. You need a rest. That's all you need. We've given Rock three days to not box at all, because if you peak now, from the peak, there's only a drop. We have to just pull back. Checking it back. I let it clear now. Seven. Oh, you're looking good, champ. Five. The heavyweight champion of the world. Three. The right on time. Two. One. Time. Work. Woo! I say forget Tony Dan's on the bus. He's totally focused, totally committed and doing everything that is necessary for him to do to repeat his victory over Lennox Lewis. I want to get in the ring and fight so bad. It's like, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. That's, that's the feeling I get. And that's what you want. That's how you work. The hook. Both of working like dogs. The hook. So ah! I got so much on my shoulders that I, I can release that day. Then I can see my kids. I can come back to my family. I can come back to being a normal guy. Pictures from uptown. My baby, third birthday party. It's my baby. It's my oldest boy. I just missed my daughter's birthday party, so they sent me the pictures. It just really took me there. Look at precious. When I see the smile on her face, you know, put a smile on my face for a day. <laughs> this is from Amira, my baby girl. This is her little drawing of an apple. <laughs> it was just beautiful to me because uh, it was her first first drawing that she brought home to me from school. So uh, I think I'm gonna keep that as long as I can. I love it, Amira. I love it. Punch this glove. Let's get it on. It's been too long. I've been over here too long. I want to see my kids. Let me go and knock this man out and get home. I really find this humorous. This man still trying to steal me. This man is a joke. <laughs> if he did knock me out in the fifth round, nobody would have said anything about his arms being down. Nobody would have said anything about anything. But he gets knocked out, so it's a big deal. Just look at the clip. He does not have the recognition or the respect from the boxing world in general and the general public. It is still very much perceived in the world to be a fluke. We know it's not true. And Rock wants the recognition and respect. As Hasim Rahman prepares for his defense of the heavyweight title, his primary motivation is Lennox Lewis's repeated assertions that his first victory was somehow a fluke. Well, I don't believe he can do that again. You know, so, you know, the lottery ticket only comes once in a while for people, and that was his lottery ticket. I definitely feel like Lennox doesn't want to own up to the fact that he was thoroughly outclassed. He told me he won every round, and I just caught him with a lucky punch. Lennox Lewis does not believe that he has lost the heavyweight championship. He has lost the titles. Lennox Lewis is what Rock said he was in, which is denial. He's got all kinds of rationalizations. The ring ropes were too taut. I got a quick count. My mind wasn't on it. I thought I beat the count, but, you know, the referee thought that this, the fight should have been stopped. The fact remains that the, the referee did count to 10. And even if he didn't count to 10, and he was still stumbling way after, a minute or so after that. So he was still out. Had the referee even allowed Rock to get near him again, could have been a tremendous problem to Lennox's future. The bad blood between the two boiled over some months ago during a joint appearance on ESPN's Up Close. I'm not gay. Why are you calling me gay? He said he's not calling me gay. So I don't understand that. I said what he did was gay. I don't know why he was so offended. Talk to most heterosexual men, whether or not it's politically correct, call them gay, it's insulting. And Lennox had had enough. I'm a hundred percent woman's man, so don't even play that. If, if you're worried about that, bring, bring your sister, bring anyone. No, 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 no. 
I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't want me saying nothing about your mother, your father, or anybody else in your family, listen, listen, you're not saying nothing about my family. I don't really think Lennox knows the high sim, the man, you know what I mean, that he doesn't tolerate that type of stuff. And, you know, and it just escalated from there. Man, you ain't nobody. I say what I want to say to you. I say what I want to say to you. What you mean? I just said it. What you want me to say? Say what you want me to say. Same thing. Like what? Like what? Like what? Anything you want. Like what? Anything what you want me to say. Same thing you want. What? When you start talking about people's relatives, you just can't play like that. And when you, you know, you put your hands on somebody, you can't play like that either. All that grabbing and touching, that's a no-no. He said, I could have beat him to a bloody pulp if I wanted to, but I thought about how much money it would cost me if I damaged my fist or his face. Yesterday, I did have him on the ground. He was kicking like a woman. Okay. Okay. There's no way he can intimidate me, no matter what he do. And the sooner he realized that, the sooner we can go and give him his retirement party, because this is it for you, Lennox. It's over. You want to do it now? You want to do it now? Huh? You want to do it now? I mean, it was hilarious. No, look at him. Look at him. It's impressive, too, because in Lennox's entire career, I've never seen someone get the better of him psychologically. I am the champ, Lennox. You are not the champ. You've been treated like the champ for so long, you don't know how to exist. It's like somebody been in prison for a long, long time, and they come home and they just can't function in society. <laughs> Lennox can't function not being a champ. The way Rockman was talking to Lennox is the way you fantasize that if you were heavyweight champion, you'd talk to an opponent. I mean, it was Ali caliber stuff. That's right, I can do that, I'm the champ. IBF, IBO, WBC, thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thank you, Lennox. You bought my new house, my new car. I mess around putting Lennox on my license tag. But I think, yeah, he got under his skin. I think that he's unnerved Lennox, that Lennox is uh, emotional, which is not good for a fighter you want to be calm. I'm not going to go in, in, in the ring angry. I'm going to go in the ring intelligent and, and fight a smart fight and do what I need to do to knock him out. As we get very close to the fight, I think you're going to find more intensity, more introspection. There will be less of the, uh, the jovial uh, rock and more of the warrior. I start like 11 o'clock. It's nice and peaceful and quiet. The air is fresh. It's a beautiful time to run. Five in the altitude of Big Bear. Getting ready. See, I ain't winded. Ready. The ball. Power is yours. As the fight draws near, Asim Rahman makes one last change to his training routine. The fight is going to take place at nighttime, uh, so I want my body to be able to know what it's going to have to do on November 17th. Thank you, there you go. That's my champ. Good. Let me know it. Good. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. On November 7th, the champ turns 29. Oh, they tried to surprise me with a little birthday party. And Johnny just spilled the bean. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Let me see this. Let me see this. Yeah. Happy birthday. But these guys, these guys take me out for dinner all the time. They're really good guys. I swear you guys didn't have to do this for me, I swear. We're gonna go back and play some Scrabble? <laughs> With seven weeks of hard work behind them, Hasim Rahman and company leave Big Bear Lake, California and take the short trip east to the site of his first title defense, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> we arrive on the night of the 12th. That's five days prior to the fight. We are here. You try to, at that point, be at peak. And then just stay there by working the floor. No boxing. Just shaking out, breaking a sweat. Just staying on a level that we hope that we come in on. <laughs> Going into his rematch with Lennox Lewis, 
Hassim Rahman still has to contend with the widespread belief that his knockout victory in South Africa was a fluke. If he repeats that punch, it'll always be known as the punch. If he doesn't and loses, it will be remembered as the accident. And he as an accidental champion. I believe that uh, they'll definitely remember Rotman as an answer to a trivia question. I believe that never throw again. As fight night in Las Vegas approaches, the odds makers agree. Lennox Lewis is favored to recapture the crown. Even though most scenarios favor Lennox winning the rematch, you know, it might be that the less likely scenario, Rachman winning again, is the one that's going to happen. At some point, Rachman is going to land some right hands. And I think when he does, Lennox is going to become unraveled. Hasim Rachman has to believe he's going to knock him out. He's already knocked him out once. And 90% of the time, the man who has won the first fight wins the second. I feel like I'm going to put the pressure on him from round one until I catch up with him. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be a war. What time? That's a heavyweight champ there.